These are fun questions. Hey, you're that skater dude. Or, my mom loves you. You used to be my favorite skater. I was like, oh, who is it now? There was a thousand cranes, origami cranes, that hung down. Like a thousand of them, all tied together. It was really beautiful. And my mom and my dad sat at the kitchen table and opened up every single one because they were folded. And then they had to like do this, like pull the beak or something. And so they opened up a thousand cranes because I guess it was for good luck. The Olympics did not go my way. So um, I think they put them all back up afterwards. Elton John, don't let the sun go down on me. And that was one of the very first sort of big skates. I don't think that I, there's no way I can rival the power and the speed and the jumps that I had back then. There's obviously no way I can do that. And it was probably why it worked so well. But, um, you know, if you hear that song and hear those lyrics, uh, you know, an older skater could probably do a better job of it. I will just choose Yuzu because I wonder what Yuzu would have done in line that would have worked. Time lapse, I'm gonna think about this for a second. What would he enjoy skating to that line? I don't know. Brick house? Yuzu do a brick house? Hmm. Uh, what's Probably nail it, actually. Do you know what would be funny to do it as a comedy? Is if Elvis Stoiko skated Singing in the Rain. And if he did it as a comedy, um, I think it would be awesome. Because I play it very Gene Kelly, I play it very straight, and it's, he's in love and all those things, but, <laughs> but I think seeing Elvis with the umbrella in the same suit and everything, just like, it would be, he would make it really funny. Because he's actually a lot funnier than people think. I mean, he just hasn't really flexed that muscle as much when in a skating. But I would like to see Elvis Stoiko do a comedy version of Singing Rain. I mean, I would love to do a cultural exchange with Scott Hamilton's repertoire and then go back and forth, you know, like, and kind of, I think that would be uh, kind of interesting to see, you know, how we, we tweak each other's skating and, and uh, com comedic timing and stuff like that. Whenever I get recognized in Canada as Scott Hamilton, um, you know, it's a real tribute to how powerful he is as an image in the sport and what he's done to figure skating and the, the legend that he is. Um, that in Canada, they say Scott Hamilton. Um, but every once in a while, I'll get called. He gets called Kurt. Okay. Once every... I don't think that happens. You're right, that never happens. I did go to Barbados on a vacation when I had so much long hair that I could actually braid it and put it in my mouth. And I was on vacation and I went to a party where you had to have long pants. So I was the only one in my group that had long pants. So I was the only one in our group that went to the party. So I walked into the party and it was outside and, and I was meeting all sorts of people. And somebody came up to me and they said, are you, are you that figure skater? And I'm like, oh man, really, really? Yeah, I am. And they're like, it's him, it's him, it's Paul Wiley, it's him, it's Paul Wiley. So I was Paul Wiley, that party. And Paul did all sorts of crazy things that Paul shouldn't have done. So I had a lot of fun. I did tell him that story in his face one. A young Ferris Bueller. Or whatever that actor's name is. What's his name? Roderick. Matthew Roderick. Right, Matthew Roderick. Um, but Ferris Bueller, I mean, I, like, you, uh, Paul Wiley and I used to joke that I'm like Ferris. No, I'm like Ferris. <laughs> um, and I think that he's so, you know, endearing and kind of gets in trouble without getting actually in trouble. Um, and I was like that. I was, I don't know if I was like Ferris, but I was kind of that guy that could do things that should get you into trouble, but he didn't really get into trouble. And I was, um, I was kind of like that. So uh, if, if, it, if the movie was made, in the way that I wished I was, or hoped I was, that it would be young Ferris Bueller. And he would do his own skating. Um, lean on me, because if you do, I'll fall over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you meant. Um, 
unskatable for anybody or unskatable for me because there's all sorts of music that I can't pull off. Uh, you know, one of my first, the first program I ever had was Dr. Zhivago because I went to the movie as a kid and then wanted to skate to it. Of course, that's what kids do. Um, but now as an adult or even as a 25 year old, there's no way that I could pull off skating to Dr. Zhivago, so Dr. Zhivago. Travel kind of sucks, but you're usually traveling with other skaters. Traveling alone is really not glamorous, and that happens a lot. Just early cab, long day flying and arriving and getting to your hotel all by yourself. Traveling with Patrick Chan and Elvis Stoiko, you know, it's it's kind of they're great guys, and we have lots of friendships, and, and it's great. Traveling alone is pretty darn unglamorous, and as soon as you get home, it doesn't matter if you were on TV and six million people saw you skate great and you won and as soon as you get home when you're a dad that's all you are like instantly as soon as that door opens none of that matters you're just dad and um, and that's it's it's not that it's unglamorous but it just all that stuff just goes away and it just doesn't matter and the bad goes away too you know if you had a bad skater you let somebody down or you lost or whatever it might be or you're injured and you're trying to come back but you come home and you're dead so uh, that's pretty awesome.